Welcome to Transporter. My name is David Hill. In this video, we are going to look at how you can sync your transporter with your NAS, thereby extending the availability of your NAS beyond your LAN into the WAN via the Transporter desktop app. To do that, we're going to use a new feature known as Storage Connector. Storage Connector is a feature that allows Transporter 75 and 150 units to sync with your existing network attached storage or NAS. Storage Connector allows users to access designated folders via either Transporter desktop client software or your existing NAS connection methods, providing great flexibility as your users traverse the LAN and WAN environments. Changes to the designated folders will continuously sync in both directions. More simply put, when you create a storage connector folder, you're creating a one-to-one -one folder relationship between a folder on your NAS and a folder usually of the same name on the transporter. To your users, this will be basically transparent because they can interact with the folder via either vector and the files will sync in both directions. In this video, we will go through all the necessary steps to create a storage connector folder. First, we'll identify a share on the NAS that we want to sync with the transporter. Next, we will identify or create a set of credentials at the NAS, which will give the transporter adequate access for any shares that you might want to create on that particular NAS. Then, we will enter that same set of credentials on the transporter at its console. Once we've done that, we will use the transporter management website to create the storage connector folder itself and begin synchronization between the two units. But before we do that, we need to quickly review some necessary requirement and best practices information. First, transporter hardware requirements. Storage connector is available on Transporter 75 or Transporter 150. You will also need a USB keyboard and a VGA compatible display. A network requirement is that the NAS and transporter must be on the same LAN. Qualified NAS systems for storage connector are data on tap 7 or later used by NetApp, Windows Server 2008 R2 or later, and the corresponding versions of Windows Storage Server 2008 R2 or later. Credential requirements. Before you begin storage connector setup, you need to gather credentials. You must be able to log in as the transporter organization admin. For each NAS, you must have or create a username password credential set that has read-write access to all of the folders that you intend to sync via storage connector. You can achieve this most easily by placing all shared folders for a NAS into one common parent directory, then adding a credential set to the parent directory and copying the permission to all subfolders. We can now create our storage connector folder. For purposes of demonstration, let's do a quick review of the four computers that we'll use in this demo. The desktop you can see now is a Mac, which will serve as an SMB client and also as the administrator's computer when we visit the transporter management website. The second computer is the Windows Server 2012 R2. This computer will serve as our NAS. The third computer you see is another Mac. This Mac is logged in as a user of the transporter 75, which will be receiving the storage connector folder from the NAS. Once that folder is created, we'll see that folder appear here in sync in real time. The final computer is the transporter itself, and we'll be using its console, which you can see here, to create the credential set for our storage connector folders. Let's start by returning to the NAS itself. At the NAS, the first thing we need to do is identify the share from which we intend to make a storage connector folder. On the NAS, I have a shares directory within my C drive, and within shares, I have the individual folders which I intend to share out via different methods. In this demonstration, we're going to use the images folder to create a storage connector folder. Note that at the moment, the folder is empty. We're actually going to add the content after we've connected it so that we can see it sync in real time. So we'll get back to that in a minute. But uh, for starting purposes, an empty folder is fine. And once you've chosen the folder, you need to look at its properties. We need to look at the sharing tab, be sure it's shared, and then look at the users who have permission. In this demonstration, we're going to use the user, Douglas Ruiz, who already has read-write privileges to this directory. Now that we have the credential set chosen, we can go to the transporter console and enter it there. To access the transporter console, the recommended method is that you connect a VGA-compatible monitor and USB keyboard to the rear panel of your transporter 75 or 150. Users who are familiar with Supermicro's IPMI options may also use console redirection via those applications. For any questions about console redirection, you may contact our technical support. Again, a display and keyboard is the most simple method. If your keyboard is of the extended variety that has a separate numerical keypad, please be aware that the transporter may not recognize extended keyboard functionality. If your login and password do not work, use the numerals at the top of the keyboard instead of the extended keyboard area. To navigate at the transporter console, you will use the cursor keys, the enter key, and the escape key. To create a set of credentials, start by using the cursor key to select Manage Device and then press Enter. Next, enter the password of your organization admin. In the next screen, choose Connect to Storage Appliance. Here you can see two credential sets that already exist on this transporter, so we will choose Add New and press Enter. 
We recommend that you give the credential set a name that corresponds to the NAS on which you are going to use it. This will help you remember later if you have multiple credential sets created. Next, enter the username and password of the credential set that you chose. The domain is optional, and in this example, we'll leave it blank. Verify the credential set information and press enter. You should now see a list of all of your credential sets, including the one that you just created. Press escape to exit this menu. Choose logout of this console and press enter. You may now leave the transporter console and return to your administrative computer, which in this case will be the first Mac. To get started, you need to go to the transporter management website and be sure you're logged in as the organization admin. Once there, click the folder button in the navigation bar to access the shared folders list. Here you can see the folder named Demo Files 2, which is already a storage connector folder running on this Transporter 75. To create a new storage connector folder, click the New Storage Connector Folder button. Enter a name for the new storage connector folder. We recommend using the same name as the NAS to prevent confusion. However, you're free to call it whatever you'd like. Once you've entered the optional folder description, choose the transporter on which you just created the credential set, and then choose the credential set name itself. In the full path to folder field, enter the server address with full path to the folder that you're adding. If you don't know what that is, we'll show you how to get it. This method works on both Mac and PC, and though the steps are slightly different, the principle is basically the same and should be familiar to any administrator. So we'll go to the Mac Finder, and we'll do a connect to server, which is Command K. Once there, we'll use the same credential set that we've chosen for our NAS folder to log into the server. And we'll choose the same share. In the finder, we can do a get info, which is Command I. And we can just simply copy and paste the full path name, address and path name into our window and hit submit. Once we submit, we'll see the synchronization initializing status. While we're waiting for that to initialize, we can invite the first user to the folder. So I'll click manage people and add Douglas Ruiz, who is currently the only user in this brand new organization. And he'll have read write permissions. We can see now that the storage connector status is OK. And if I want to be very thorough, I can sign out as the administrator, who's also Douglas Rees. And I can log back in as Douglas Rees, the user. And here I can see the invitation to the shared folder, which we've just created. So I'll accept that. Once I've done that, I'll sign out and sign back in as the administrator so that we can check the folder status again. And if I go back to the folder, we can now see that Douglas is an active member. And the owner that's referred to here is the organization admin who created the folder. So at this point, the folder should be ready to synchronize between the NAS and the transporter. So let's see if we can transfer some files. Here we have a user logged in on the Mac via SMB. There's no transporter uh, involved in this particular transaction. Uh, we're logged in to our shared folder, and I've got a, some source files here, which are very obviously named SMB client files. It's just some screenshots, some images. So we'll copy those into the images directory. So then we'll go back to our transporter client Mac. This is the Mac on which Douglas is logged in, and we can see that the images folder has already synced to his transporter library and the files are already present. So uh, that was pretty easy. Now let's try this the other way and to make it a little more fun, let's take this out of Douglas's transporter library and put it in his transporter folder as a locally synced folder. So now that will move. To right here and we can see it's uh, still synchronizing and they're all done now we're getting our file notifications up here in the corner showing that they synced so now let's sync some files back to the SMB client 
So I have a folder on my desktop named Demo Files 2, and it's also just full of images. So let's copy that back into our images share to see how long that takes to get back to the SMB client on the other side. So I'll put this in here, and you'll see it turn blue in just a sec, which means it'll be synchronizing to the transporter. So now we know it's synchronizing to the transporter. If we look in here, we'll see the individual files turn green as they sync. So it's going pretty fast. Most of them are already up. Now if we look back at the NAS, we'll see that it's already appeared here, and we're starting to see the individual files. So the synchronization happens between the units very quickly. And in that amount of time, all 44 items have now synced. So there you have it. To recap the major steps of this procedure, we identify a share on the NAS that we wish to synchronize with the transporter. We identify or create a set of credentials at the NAS, which we will then enter on the transporter. We go to the transporter console to create that credential set, and then we return to the transporter management website as the organization admin to set up the storage connector folder. As a final note, keep in mind that once you set up a storage connector folder, it will appear to your users as a normal shared folder. A note on use with unqualified NAS systems. Transporter software will not directly block you from using storage connector on an unqualified system. You may do so at your own risk. While not officially qualified, preliminary research suggests that storage connector will work on embedded Linux systems which support SMB SIFs and which have all other sharing protocols disabled. In other words, if you want to try Storage Connector on an embedded Linux NAS, you must first disable other protocols such as AFP, FTP, and NFS. Use of additional protocols while Storage Connector is running may result in partial sync, delayed sync, or other unintended consequences. This restriction does not apply to the qualified systems. Additional best practices. First, you should use a flat folder structure. Another way of saying that is to avoid stratified permissions. If a targeted NAS source folder contains subfolders with differing or stratified permissions, you should consider the subfolder permissions at the NAS at risk. Since it accesses the NAS via one credential per storage connector folder, Transporter does not propagate or enforce any subfolder permissions. Normal user actions, such as moving folders, may cause subfolder permissions to change at the NAS. Transporter supports a flat folder structure in which permissions are governed only at the root of each share according to settings you make at the Transporter Management website. To avoid this issue, realign your NAS source folders into a flat topology in which subfolders don't need differing permissions. Avoid creating a storage connector folder within another. Transporter will allow you to create a storage connector folder from a subfolder of the source of an existing storage connector folder. However, it's best if you avoid this practice, thus avoiding data duplication at the transporter or a scenario in which users of the higher folder might accidentally move or delete the lower folder. It's best to realign your folders into a flat topology. Avoid mixing transporter solutions. Do not use storage connector to target content on a Windows server which is already running transporter desktop as illustrated in our other videos to share or sync that same content. We recommend that you discontinue use of Transporter Desktop at a Windows server prior to targeting it with Storage Connector. A full uninstall is recommended. Avoid multi-unit targeting of a source folder. Do not target the same NAS source folder from two or more transporter units. Instead, allow the sync to occur between the transporter units themselves, which it will by default. Backup requirement. Connected Data strongly recommends that you keep a version to backup of your NAS and or transporter contents via third-party backup solution of your choice and that you do so prior to setting up Storage Connector. We provide SMB backup access to the transporter for this purpose. To review a written copy of this procedure along with more detailed requirements and best practices information, please see go.connecteddata.com slash syncmynas. Thank you for watching.